I'm now in Sardinia and cycling from Cagliari to Porta Torres, which is where I get the ferry across to Barcelona. And for the first part of the, the journey, I route along the coast. Since getting into Cagliari in Sardinia, uh, I've cycled up the east coast, which was a, a lot lumpier than I was expecting. I was expecting to be a bit flatter with the profile. Um, as I looked at the, the route for today, and it looked flat, and then with a massive uh, hill at the end, which I'm doing now. But obviously I didn't zoom in close enough as it was up, down, up, down, up, down which was stunning, beautiful road, and then amazing beaches uh, with crystal blue water and uh, super clear and beautiful to swim in, super nice temperature. And then, so now I'm veering off, off from the coast and going to a place called Villa Salto. Um, and yeah, it's 500 meters above sea level so where I started and I'm going to stay in a B&B so get a shower and hopefully wash my clothes I'm not exactly sure what's happened, but um, the hospitality of Sardinia has meant that I'm very drunk.
everyone pretty much knows everyone. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lovely climb up to up to the village, and there's only one BMB in the whole place, and it's it's amazing, <laughs> really nice. Uh, but I'm now back on the road. Um, set off about 12. Spent most of the morning just sorting out my washing, getting that dry, having nice clean clothes, uh, filling up on some food, and editing a bit of um, footage. We're now heading towards Porto Torres, which will probably take me three days. And uh, it's hot here in Sardinia, and I've currently got a rather strong headwind which is sapping the energy a little bit. Um, the plan was to set off a bit earlier uh, from Villa Salto and get some miles in before the heat of midday, but that didn't quite pan out. I think I'm gonna do a bit of riding into the night tonight and camp somewhere late just to get some miles in when it's a bit cooler at night. But, uh, a lumpy old journey to Porto Torres. riding along an old mountain road with very little traffic on and it's super scenic. It was suggested to me by a guy called Massimo and he's a, a local Sardinian um, cycling tour guide and he, he told me to come this way and I'm really glad he did. It was absolutely stunning. I think I use that word too much but some of the roads that I've been on it's just amazing, and especially in gold now, which is now beautiful.
So my plan for today was to get up early and uh, get some kilometers under my belt. But what happened was I started late, I started after after um, midday, and uh, I've just been taking so much footage because it's just been so amazing to um, ride through some of these places. And I was descending this um, climb, and I just saw this stone structure, and I literally couldn't pass up the opportunity to camp up it at the top. Um, so, yeah, I've got my own dungeon, um, got my bivy site down there on some stones, and then the bikes of the other side. There's no one about, so I'm sure it'll be fine. And then it's the stunning view behind me. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have known this was here, but um, thanks, Massimo. This was a, a very good um, suggestion. I'm gonna sleep here tonight. Um, so I've only done about 95 kilometers, which is not ideal. Um, but I'm gonna get up early, um, start maybe 4 a.m. or something and just crack on and try and get um, 200 kilometers plus done tomorrow and that should be golden then. On the, the menu tonight, um, I was going to stop at a pizzeria but seeing as I've, um, I'm going to camp here, it's uh, Amar de Pan, which are rosemary breadsticks with extra virgin olive oil, um, product of Italy. So yeah, they're tasty. Then I've got some Oreos, got a banana, um, got some nuts. So yeah, I'll be fine. And then grab some food and a coffee in, in a bar in the morning. Um, yeah, I have to send back to the coast tomorrow and then pull back inland. I'm still going up the, the east side of the island, um, which I was told was the, the best way to do it. And then I cut across to um, wherever I'm getting the ferry. It's, it's um, far off the top of my mind, but um, yeah. Oh, beautiful. I'm going to put the phone away and just take in the view. riding at 3 a.m. this morning and I started off pretty high and then descended all the way down to the coast uh, all in the dark and the sun was starting to uh, brighten up the sky when I got down to the to the sea and then I've just been steadily climbing um, for the rest of the day until now and now I'm about 1100 meters above sea level and it's pretty windy up here you might be able to hear. Uh, yeah, now to a long descent down.
I think my technique for uh, eating the prickly pears is improving. So I'm now using an old pack of nuts to grab it with my hand and then using my pliers don't have a knife on but they do have a, a file on so I'm using a file to cut them open and then holding them down with the, the nut packet and then using a fork to uh, scoop out the goods but yeah still getting a, a few uh, spikes in my hand but a lot less than I have done in the past so I've accidentally ended up on like a major road to Albea um, and once you're on a, a major road you can't really turn around and um, go off the way you came you're kind of like stuck on that carriageway then um, so I just decided to just stick it out and come off on the next exit but unfortunately there was a tunnel um, one of the lanes was closed so the whole other side of the tunnel so there's two tunnels one going for one direction one the other and it's closed for renovations and stuff so and it's a Sunday so there's there's no work going on and I've got a full motorway tunnel to myself so uh, a lot safer than being on the tunnel with all the traffic but yeah I need to work out how to get off this main road and uh, onto a safer road and a, a, a legal road. This uh, field wasn't quite as nice as yesterday's campsite, but um, I was just tired and had to do a bit of a detour because there was a closed road on the route I was gonna take. So I just jumped in this field and it's kind of um, been plowed, so the dirt's kind of soft, so it's kind of comfortable. But yeah, got about 100 kilometers to do, bit of a bit lumpy um, to start with, and then downhill and then coast, and yeah, should be good. Um, let's go to a bar and get some an espresso. I'm all packed up and uh, ready to hit the road. about 70 kilometers from Porto Torres where my uh, trip in Sardinia ends. I'm going up the, the last proper climb of the trip as well right now. It's about, gets up to about 700 meters which is pretty small compared to some of the ones I've summited but it's still sapping the legs a little bit. I just stopped in a village halfway up and I kind of regret what I bought. So I bought these wrap things. Well, I thought they were wraps, but they, they don't wrap very well. As soon as you like fold them, they break up. And then I brought some chocolate spread and some bananas. And because the wraps don't bend, 
and it's very difficult to eat. And now I'm, I'm just so full and it's not great for climbing. And because I wasn't enjoying it that much, I didn't really finish them. So now I'm carrying a, a jar of chocolate spread and some wraps in my back pocket, which is adding to the weight. But yeah, get to the top of this climb and then it's pretty much a descent down to the coast and then ride along the coast to Porto Torres. Just about to come into Porto Torres, which means that I've finished my cycling in Sardinia and uh, getting a ferry to Barcelona, where I'm gonna ride 70 miles up to Ponts, I think that's how you pronounce it, to do a gravel race called Ranxo.